Grab your pencil, your paper, and your nuts. We're going to Wisconsin. It's the obligatory PSU pregame show. Boy, all right. All right, bye week is over and it is about to get real. It's the obligatory PSU pregame show from We Are In in Phillipsburg. I'm your fake host, Chris Bucanati. Uh, just like last week in studio, I got Mike the Mailman, the beloved campus icon himself, and Brandon Noble, former Penn State NFL defensive tackle. But through the magic of modern technology, we are this week joined by the new dad, Kevin Horn. What's happening, Horn? Yeah, I read all your comments. Oh, best show ever. Horn wasn't on it. Replace Horn with Amato. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, <guys. laughs> Fair enough. Fair. Fair enough. <laughs> We're glad to have you along for the ride. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, this is, I, I think, fair to describe as something of a trap game. Yeah. I'm, yes. It is, I think it is a little bit. I, I think coming off, like we talked about in the last show, you know, you come off that big win, you go out to USC, you get the first the first big win out there, and then you get the bye week, right? So what does that do from a momentum standpoint? And then on top of it, the next opponent after this one is a big one. So it is definitely one of those games that if you don't show up ready to play, you could be in trouble. It's a great place to play. It's one of my favorite places to play in the Big Ten. Uh, Camp Randall is, is a lot of fun. It's, it's energetic. It's loud. They're really into it. Uh, you can smell the beer coming out of the stands. Which I, I in the stadium. Yeah, no, I remember. I thought yeah, it was the greatest thing ever when yeah. I went out there in yeah, '96. Awesome. Um, but, but yeah, no. This this is a game that, that you definitely hope that they are focused and ready for. All this money to renovate Beaver Stadium, and we're not getting a bar. I don't know. I don't know if it's too late <laughs> to to amend that plan. <laughs> that, they, they ought to at least look at it. Uh, Mike the Mailman yeah. trap game. I I have gotten sick and tired in the last two weeks. And frankly, a few before that, looking ahead. Oh, if we can only beat USC and then Ohio State, Ohio State. I'm like, no, 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 no. Hey, guys. Going to Camp Randall Stadium, that's a tough place to play. No trap game. I don't believe in trap games. <laughs> of course do you not. don't. Yeah. Yeah. You play the game on the field. Uh, no. Kevin Horn, through the magic of Zoom, your thoughts? Trap game, yes or no? Well, a uh, trap game I define as like a team that it seems to be bad, but that could beat you. And I don't think Wisconsin is a team that I think is bad. I mean, I think it's they're not as good as USC. Obviously, they lost to USC by two touchdowns. Penn State beat USC. Uh, Penn State's clearly the better team, but Wisconsin's a good team. I, I mean, Wisconsin's like, it, 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 they're doing much better than they have in previous years, the last like three or four years, since they were the perennial Big Ten West champion every year and get their butts kicked by Ohio State. Um, they're, uh, I mean, they're, they're, they're going to be in the top half of the Big Ten and playing them on the road at night. It's not a trap game. It's a game you got to win. It's a game, look, I mean, the spread's bouncing between 10 and 12 points. So again, Penn State has to win this game. But they're not a bad team. And uh, so trap game. Now, Minnesota is the trap game, so to say. <laughs> sure. this, is just a, yeah. this is just a game on your schedule. You got to go beat them. Yeah. And, and to, again, return to the point you've been making throughout the season, one of those middle of the pack Big Ten opponents that you're looking for, really. You, you want to be able to say that we didn't just knock over a bunch of tomato cans. Yeah. We played some teams with a pulse. This is one of them. Yeah. It is. And, and th it's going to be a test, right? A different kind of test than than. USC, right? Where you had all the athletes running around on the field for, for our defense, right? This is going to be, they've got to go out and, and, and those guys play good defense, right? They're solid on offense, right? This is a well coached football team. Sure. So you're not going to get them with, with tricks. I mean, you might get them with tricks. Look, I know that I was kind of down on the gimmicky thing with Kotal Nicky, but he hasn't used them all the time. And when he's used them, they've worked. They don't, when he uses them, they don't feel gimmicky. No, they don't. Me. They don't. They, they feel don't. like they're part of a plan. They fit. Which is they fit. counterintuitive, I guess, yeah. but it just, yeah. for whatever reason. But, you know? but I do, I do think though that this, this is like, like Kevin said, right? This is a good football team that's playing better than they've been playing for a while. Um, you know, Fickle's got them going. So I think that it, it'll be, it's a good football game and the, the environment is going to be great. I mean, it is. It's one of the, it's one of the reasons you come play football in the big time. I was going to ask you about that. You said that was one of your favorite Absolutely. stadiums to play at. 
Talk a little bit about what the atmosphere is like for a player down on the field at Camp Randall. It's loud. I mean, it really is. And it's one of those stadiums, right? It's not big, right? It's not like Beaver Stadium. It's not like the Horseshoe. It's right. not like the big house. But they're they're and they're not even really on top of you like they are at Kinnick right. in Iowa, right? It's a little bit more spread out, but it is just really loud. It's a tight kind of old stadium, right? And and it's very loud. It's very compact. They the, they love to drink beer, which we can all appreciate. You know, big fan. Look, Wisconsin guys in the NFL were some of my best friends. Like, I really enjoyed those guys. I really, really did. Uh, you know, and, and so, um, so it, it, it's a great football environment. It really is, and it, it's going to be loud. I mean, it's going to be a challenge. It's going to be a really good challenge. Kev, you've been there multiple times as a visiting fan. What's your takeaway from going on the road to Wisconsin? Yeah, Wisconsin is a great place. Great place for a traveling fan. Unlike USC, which I thought was a dump in one of the worst environments in the Big Ten. Listen to our podcast for more on my uh, USC trip. But uh, I love Camp Randall. I was so excited that it's a 630 local game because then you get all day. You can sleep in. You get all day <laughs> to bop around and the game will be over by 930, 10. And then you get the whole rest of the night to like it's basically like you start your night at 10 again. So it, it probably in the Big Ten, it has the most good bars in the mm. in the town I'll, other than state college which i'm biased for but like the number of good quality student alumni bars madison wisconsin's got it going on yes camp randall's a great environment now i i have i don't know i i think we, i may have seen him under the lights at camp randall once in the last decade i think I, this is might be my fifth time there of course the highlight being the bill o'brien bunch of effers game when penn state was <laughs> 20 something point underdogs and one i'll never uh forget that game yeah. but uh love going there old rickety stadium that's yep. just uh, wonderful everyone will be hyped up uh wisconsin still i mean wisconsin if they run the table could theoretically still go to the college football playoffs so you know it's like it's it's one of those deals where like they actually still have a lot to play for their students show up and uh yeah i i agree with you brandon it's is it, as good as i mean it's not good being an opposing player i suppose but it's as far as the fan experience goes one of the best. Now, jump yeah. around's overrated. They just have marketed the shit out of that right. to the point yeah, of yeah, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yep. But um, but from kickoff to to the end of the game, like I I had this game circled before the season as like I can't wait to go to Camp Randall. Yeah, yeah I love it. Yeah. And the OCD in me can't let pass that the bunch of efforts game was 2012. The 24 point underdog was 2013. That was the road trip out there. Sorry, can't yeah, do it. It's yeah. all good. Again. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. You're a bunch of efforts at home, but the, yeah. but the OCD Bill was killing last me. game. Yeah, yeah. You got it. I actually, when I looked at the way the schedule panned out, and you know, you don't get the television times until a couple weeks early, but you can kind of intuit what's going to go where. When it was obvious to me that this was going to in all likelihood, end up being a night game. I actually thought that might be a benefit to Penn State mm -hmm. when we talk about the potential of a, of a trap game because I, you and I talked about this a little bit off the air. I kind of feel like in years where Penn State has gone out there and has experienced a lot of success historically, right. uh, both under James Franklin and, and prior at Camp Randall Stadium, it's almost like the environment, especially under the lights, is so energized it hypes up the visitors. Yeah, too. you oh, definitely yeah. saw that in that uh, 2013 game. Kev was talking about. Yeah, look, we've talked about going on the road is is fun. Yeah, as a player, you enjoy going on the road. You like going into environments like that. It, it is, it's exciting. It's way better than going to some place like Kevin said, like the Coliseum, where it's flat, it's dead, right? Like when we used to go play, like in the Meadowlands or you know Franklin Field, you go play Temple on the road. It's like everybody's asleep. You know, you're not having any fun. But when you're in that environment, right, and the lights are on. You know, everybody's watching on TV. The place is going crazy. They're screaming and yelling at you. You know, the little kids are flipping you off. You know, it's, it's, that's what you want as a player. Again, that's why you do it. That's why you come play football. Sounds like an Eagles game. It, it's, there was a lot of similarities, um, but the people were a little nicer in general. Just in general, was people from <laughs> you're, you're Wisconsin or Midwest, way nice, Midwest versus nice, Philadelphia completely fans? Completely different yeah. animal. That does completely not different shock animal. Me. <laughs> What about the one hour time difference, Brandon? Do we want to spend an entire news cycle debating about whether <laughs> the one hour time difference is going to cause Penn State to start <laughs> slow? I, I don't think we have to. I, I think that I think I've just accepted that we start slow now, Kev. Yeah, I mean, yeah, at the yeah, end yeah, of the day, just, like yep. I don't think it has anything to do what time it is at all. I and mean, we're just yeah. a, we're a slow starting football team. Yeah. So, but no, I mean, look, the the time difference actually playing in Central Time. I always enjoy. It. Like to, to me, I spent four years in Dallas, and as a as a player, you get the game kind of done a little bit earlier. And when you were now, this is a different one, but you used to have that great 
noon Big Ten game on the East Coast when I played. And so you'd go out to, you know, you'd go out to Iowa and kick off at 11 in the morning, right? You'd be back on the plane and you'd be in Happy Valley enough time to go to Hickey's and get a barrel and have a good time. But See, there you go. This, this is, is this the is perspective gonna, the players have. Everybody <laughs> thinks, oh, they, they, they think that's bad. No, 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 like, no, no. You get it out of the way. Yeah. You can party. But, but I think this will, this will be a fun environment. This is, this is one of those games where you, you really enjoy the atmosphere. It's like going to Kinnick. It's like going to Columbus. It's like going to the big house. It's you against the world at night in a great environment. It'll be fun. Well, Noble, you talk about slow start. <laughs> yeah. We're going to take a little break. We're going to have Mike the Mailman's Trends to Treasure. And then we don't want to get too positive too quickly on this program. We're going to talk about Penn State teams out of the bye week under James Franklin. So do not go anywhere. You don't want to miss that. Actually, you probably do. <laughs> but stay with us. <laughs> Hi everybody, Mike the Mailman with another week of Trends to Treasure. This week we have four college games and no NFL game. First up for college, we have Central Michigan at Miami of Ohio. Central Michigan is 0-5 in the last five games, 0-3 in the last three road games, so the play here is Miami of Ohio. Next up we have Colorado State versus New Mexico. Colorado State is 4-0 in the last four games, and 4-0 in the last four home games, so the play here is Colorado State. Next up we have Kansas at Kansas State. Kansas is 1-4 in the last five games, so the play here is Kansas State. Our final game is next Tuesday. We have Louisiana at Texas State. Louisiana is 9-1 in the last 10 games, 4-1 in the last five away games, so the play here is Louisiana. And that's it for this week's edition of Trends to Treasure. Remember, bet with your head and not with your heart. Go get them! This segment of Obligatory is brought to you by Concierge Medical Associates. Whether you're a weekend warrior or elite-level athlete, let Dr. Stephen Murphy and his board-certified sports medicine specialists keep you at the top of your game. Schedule an in-person or remote consultation at conciergemedical.ai. Oh, okay. Well, you are still with us, and hopefully we're going to keep you with us here on the Obligatory PSU pregame show from the We Are In because we are about to touch a third rail, yeah, guys. James Franklin's record after the bye week. I can't wait to hear this. I can't. Wait. I would have been better off if you did not handed me that piece of paper. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I shared these statistics with you guys yeah. prior to oh, yeah. today's taping. Uh, Kev, did you know these numbers, or was any of this illuminating to you? No, I mean, he has a reputation for being poor off the bye week. Again, I think it's this little bit of a small sample size. And also you play Ohio State like five times in the last decade out of the bye week. You're going to lose yeah. most of those games. So I don't really put a whole lot of stock into it. Obviously, everyone talks about the Illinois loss in 2021 off the bye week. As one of the they worst should. Games in, one of the worst games in Penn State history, losing as a 20-point four favorite in a million overtimes. But hey, we already got a bye week this year. We beat Kent State fifty six nothing. So I don't know. <laughs> right. It's uh, right. we're on a roll. Okay, it's, it's, so it's one and all. too small. I, I, I like I, positive I, Kevin. I don't even know. Yeah, <laughs> see, I mean, well, like I said, it, it, he's it, on it, Zoom. He's we're happy. on a new timeline. I know. Yeah, 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 that's exactly yeah, right. We are on a new timeline. has branched yeah. off. Trust, I'm holding fun. it in. Trust me, I'm very <laughs> negative. I wish I was there with you guys. It's a great time to be in Happy Valley right now. And yes, it is. Outside of the pumpkin patch in Pittsburgh. So trust me, I'm not feeling positive at all. <laughs> so here, here are the ugly stats. And I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's kind of a small sample size. And it's kind of not. I mean, it's 12 games over 10 years. James Franklin is 4-8 and eight off the bye week. He's a losing record as a favorite in those games. 3-4 and four and then 1-4 and, 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 one and four as an underdog. But not good. No. Not good stuff, guys. So w one thing that I will give James on these numbers, he had two bye weeks in 2014, yep. and that was probably the lowest point during the sanctions era. Yeah. And you lost off both of those bye weeks. And it was Michigan and Ohio State. I, correct. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. So and then and then you, again, the following year, 2015, you're still crawling out of the sanctions era. You play Michigan, you lose again. So you're in an 0-3 hole. Yeah already that you got to dig yourself out of. So that's that's an important caveat. So I, I'm looking at these numbers, and this is just what scares the living hell out of me, okay? I look at 2018, Yep. you lose by one point for the second straight year to Ohio State, you go on bye week, then you come back home for homecoming, and you lose to a pedestrian Michigan State squad as a 13 and a half point favorite on your home field. 
gross. All right. 2019, I think, yeah, the last year Penn State had two bye weeks. weeks yeah. And another year where they moved their way up into the top four. You win off the first one versus Maryland. Congratulations. And then that's that infamous, infamous, one of my least favorite like experiences as a human being, <laughs> that 2019 <laughs> Minnesota game. Worst game you lose it. And then Kev already mentioned the loss on homecoming again to the Illini when you're number seven, you're a 24 point favorite. You lose it in nine overtimes. So here we are. We lost off the bye week to Michigan and Ohio State in that order, the last two seasons. And here we are. Does any of this matter? Does it, uh, is it just another narrative to be dispelled? Well, I, I think that if you, if you look at it and the 2016, we beat Ohio State, right? Like that, that was the year, right? That was also to me, one of the better football teams that James has had. In, For in, sure. Right. Yeah. And, and I think that this is definitely shaping up to potentially be one of the best football teams that he's had. I, I, I think it's very close already to be in the so best. So do I. So personally. do I. And, I. and I'm not quite ready to, to give them that, but, sure. but I think that they're, they're there, right? They're, they're definitely in the conversation with the 2016 football team. And I think that, that, that being said, this is, this is maybe an opportunity to just like going out to USC and winning that football game to kind of get off the snide coming out of the bye week. I like that. You, you hope, right? You hope. I mean, look, I, I, we have gotten almost disgustingly positive on this show all of a sudden. I feel like it's because Kevin hasn't been here in two weeks. Mike is bringing us over to that side of the table. <laughs> yeah. I'm not super comfortable with it, to Let's be completely honest with that, you. But. I may start drinking like shelf vodka here soon. <laughs> so, uh, you know, <laughs> instead of anti-fragile. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know, I don't know how I feel about it, but, but it, but it, they're, they're doing it on the field. Yeah, they, and so this, this is a team that I think can do it. They have a really good team this year. You're right. And I, I think. That's nice to read all that stuff about the bye week, but I, it's a different Penn State. You just did a segment. I know. The whole segment is called Trends to Treasure. Did, yes. Right? So not only will they lead you to treasure, but you can treasure them because they're valuable. Yeah, right. This is valuable context we're giving our audience. And you're just like, ah, oh, don't worry about it. It's fine. It's nothing. It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. It, you know what, it, it is. It, the bye week is a challenge. I mean, it, it's, <laughs> it's hard to... And every team is different. And, and so, like we talked about last week, you, you get the win, you've been on the road, you know, it's a long trip, you know, you, you've got, you go through kind of a week of being off schedule a little bit, yeah. you know, and, and how does the locker room handle it? How does the team handle it? And then coming back into it again. And I think the thing that makes it the most dangerous, the thing that concerns me the most is the fact that Ohio State is on the other side of it. It's not coming uh, out of the bye week. Mm. It's the fact that if it were, Minnesota or Maryland or Michigan State or someone like that, right? You, you go, okay, like they're going to be dialed into this game because this is a good Wisconsin football team. Yeah. yeah. But, but everybody in your, your, your human nature, right, is to say, well, the, the big one is next week, right? So again, that's really the only thing that makes me uncomfortable going into this football game. It's a game that we should win. Yeah. Yeah. But aren't the coaches aware of that also? Don't, don't say, hey, you guys don't even think. Frank, I'm not going to say, hey, Ohio State's next. Oh, yeah, no, no. I mean, he's 1-0, no, right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. that, that's that's how this is going to go. So I think you'll have the team focus in on this one. Yeah, but it, it has more to do with the players than it does with the coaches. Oh, no. That, that yeah. is one thing. I know our, our, our buddy, Lennon Tengwall, who we're going to try to get on the show at some point this, this season, has talked to me a lot, and all of us, about how the one thing he will definitely say about Franklin is that he truly has the team bought yep. in on the 1-0 yep. thing. And when you go back to what I said last segment, Another reason why I like a night game at Camp Randall Stadium is the brand of the team is good enough. The destination and the kickoff time are enough that I think it works against looking past them. I agree. Right. It if this should. was like a nooner at Illinois or something, yes. I'd be, I think I'd be more concerned about it. Alternate universe Kevin Horn on Zoom. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, well what are your thoughts on this? It's, psychologically, it's changed for me, like that look ahead to Ohio State, right? I wrote off Ohio State as a loss when the schedule came out a year ago because it doesn't matter anymore, right? What matters now is Penn State beating Wisconsin, beating Washington, and beating Minnesota. And they'll beat That's Maryland a good because they're, they're terrible. Because you can go 11-1 and one and you're hosting a home playoff game. Yep. So I don't even wow. – there's a look ahead. There used to be a look ahead. We're like, all right, can 11-1 and one Penn State get in? Do they have to beat Ohio State? Now that's out the window. 11-1 and one Penn State is in and hosting a home playoff game. Fine. Ohio, lose to Ohio State. I, this, is, this has been the effect of the playoffs is the Ohio State game does not 
matter. I guess you can go to Indy and win a Big Ten championship, but that's essentially the first round of the playoffs there. Um, so I'm more worried about – I'm more up, amped up for this game and Washington – and Minnesota, frankly, than, than Ohio State to some extent. Now, that'll probably change next week when I'm in Happy Valley and the leaves are changing and, it's, <laughs> every, and game day and big noon are all here and all that stuff. But for now, I am more nervous about Wisconsin and Ohio State because of that gimme built into the new playoff structure. So I, maybe that psychologically changes some things uh, on the field. I don't know. I don't know that the coaching staff would love the logic of the argument. The Ohio State game doesn't matter anymore, so you <laughs> yeah, need right. to take this one more seriously. But I like it. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah, it. Yeah, that's yeah. that's nice. pretty good. Yeah. All right. Well done, Kev. On that note, we're going to hop to another short break, and we'll be back with our random number generator predictions for Wisconsin. So stay with us. Random Number Generator is brought to you by the good folks at Anti-Fragile Brewing Company. Anti-Fragile is the official beer supplier fueling the obligatory pregame show. Anti-Fragile brews incredible beer we all enjoy and recommend. And check out their Moody Culture Kombucha and fill up on Uncle John's John's Cheese Steaks. Check them out when you're in Happy Valley at 324 East Calder Way or anytime at antifragilebrew.com. All right, it's time to predict this one. It's it's big. This is big, big time stuff. That win at USC last week opened up the path to all sorts of conversations. Big Ten championship, maybe a home playoff game if you can't get that Big Ten title, and making some serious noise in the college football postseason. But now it's about focusing on every opponent every week, and this is one of the ones that can do some damage. They're in their building and they've turned it on this season. So we're talking random number generator. We're predicting our scores for Wisconsin, Penn State, talking about the game a little bit more. Uh, Mailman, I'm gonna start with you, okay. and I'm gonna put a question to you that I'm gonna put to the entire panel here. How do you feel about the fit of head coach Luke Fickle with the Wisconsin program? You think this is gonna work out long-term? I think so, yeah, I think that's a good fit. Very good fit, and I think, uh, it, it, it's, they're showing it on the field, definitely. I think it's a really good fit. Yeah. Okay. I know. But. 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 I was waiting for the but. I don't think Wisconsin's that good. I mean, they're. I, I think they are a, a middle of the pack Big yeah. Ten team. Uh, like we always, we've talked about how down the Big Ten is. The last couple of years have been down. And I, 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 don't, th I don't see anything. I, I don't see a problem with this game at all. I mean, no big deal. Yes, Mike. I know you're not going to give me a score prediction, but just <laughs> please randomly generate the margin of victory for the Nittany Lions. 13. Penn State won by 13. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Virtual Kevin Horn. What do you got? Luke Fickle. You good fit here? It is every Wisconsin team that I have seen since I was a boy, like a little, like for the last <laughs> 20 years. It's the same, same prototype, right? Yep. Like yep. Uh, 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 an anemic offense, they can still beat up on. Uh, bad teams and a stout defense. Yep. You know, Tyler Van Dyke was their quarterback. He tore his ACL against Alabama. So they're going with Braden Locke. Again, they're the exact same, just a random white kid from the middle of nowhere. Like this, that's their quarterback. Like that's, that is Wisconsin. They can't run. They're not mobile, which is good. They can just um, focus on the, on the receivers there. They run a three back. Uh, they, they can run a little bit. They run a three back uh, rotation with one premier back um, to Wee Walker. So, uh, look, Penn State's the better team. Uh, yeah. If you can get if you can get ten, take Penn State. If it's above ten, I would leave it alone. It keeps bouncing. I mean, it's open at some books at eleven and a half and ten and a half. I don't know. It's all over the place. I, I'm gonna. I mean, I I still don't trust. Even though the points allowed, yards there allowed, is. there we go. There, there he is. is. There we go. <laughs> I I don't I don't trust this defense yet okay. as much as I probably should based on the statistics because I think we have big big holes at linebacker. And imagine a linebacker is an important position when you're playing a team like Wisconsin. Mm. So um, I think they're going to be able to score a little bit. I'm going to take Penn State 34 to 27. So uh, Wisconsin to cover, Penn State to win. Again, Penn State's by far the better team, by far, by far. Their offense is night and day better than Wisconsin. The defense is a little close, uh, closer than I'd like. Uh, he's got to get it done. He's got to, he's got to, He's got to beat uh, an inferior opponent on the road off a of bye week. And uh, he, he he did that two weeks ago. So let's do, it, let's do it once more. And you win this game and you're pretty much locked for the playoffs. I mean, you really are. Yeah, You'd have to lose you have to lose both Washington and Minnesota to not get in if you win this week. 
I'm, I'm counting Purdue as Maryland as, as wins. So this is, yeah. um, this would seal it. I mean, this Penn state would be like minus, I don't know, 400 to make the playoffs if they win this weekend. So important game, important game. Looking you guys are going to see me like you've not seen me in a long time. They pull this one out. Cause I'm just going to get progressively more and more nervous <laughs> as, 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 as the weeks go by. I'm going to try not to do that. I'm going to just try to enjoy the ride right. and appreciate that. It, it's, it, it is a blessing and an honor to be a Penn state Nittany lions fan. I, I, I talked last week about one of the few programs in the country that has won as much as Penn State has and, and wins games like they did against USC two weeks ago. So I, I'm just going to try to embrace the 1-0 mentality, take it a week at a time. I'm going to answer my own question. I do not love the matchup of Luke Fickle and Wisconsin long term because the one place where I will quibble with Kev a little bit is that this doesn't quite to me feel like our Barry Alvarez coaching tree Wisconsin team in that there's this idea that, you know, oh, maybe we can modernize and open up the offense a little bit more. You know, I've seen coaches go into places like Nebraska mm -hmm. and Michigan, Michigan and yeah. try to do that. And, and we know how that worked out. I, you know what? Look, just stick to what you know, which is play caveman ball, <laughs> par party like it's 1965 and, and win 10 games a year. And when you try to be anything more than that, I think sometimes you risk losing what you had. So I don't know that I love this matchup uh, between coach and, and program long term. I do tell you what scares the living crap out of me is, is, is this, all this bi week nonsense that we fed you in the last uh, segment. I mean, just, I mean, scares the hell out of me. <laughs> Nevertheless, I, well, I, I just did the whole spiel a few weeks ago, playing the clip from the previous year's show. I'm not going to predict for you to do something good until you show me you can do something good. And I'd, I'd be kind of an ass if they went and did yeah. it. And, and then I didn't pick them, right? I have watched Penn State go out and have a lot of success against the Badgers in Madison, under the lights. I, I'm I, That 2008 game where we just laid the lumber to yeah. them, Derek Williams had a punt return for a touchdown. Aaron Maven had a big night. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a performance like that I'm just going to take the Nittany Lions 30 to 20, Brandon Noble. Nice. All right. Mm -hmm. I like it. Uh, the, the fickle Badger, uh, you know, kind of marriage, uh, I, I think it's, it's solid. I don't think they'll get any better. I don't think they'll be any worse. I think they'll be a middle of the road team. But I don't, I don't, I, th I do think that might be one of the only fan bases in college football that w can live there yeah. and, and not well, be too disappointed because they have a bar in their stadium. That's They're exactly happy right. They're happy. Party. Like Kev said, like, like Madison's one of those places that I have not enjoyed as a civilian, right? Like I've never gone out there as a fan. I've never been able to go enjoy it. I've, like I said, Badgers were some of my best friends in the NFL. Yeah. They all like to drink beer and have a good time. They told me many stories about all the great watering holes. So maybe at some point I'll make it out there. But uh, th this is this, I, I think that, I think the problem with Fickle, I don't know that Fickle will get them to that 10 win spot. And I do think that they need to be in that eight to 10 win spot consistently or they'll move on. Yeah, uh, yeah. Especially if it's not a Wisconsin guy, if it's not a Barry Alvarez guy, right? And Fickle's a good football coach, did a great job at Cincinnati, uh, you know, but I, I don't think he's a great fit there long term. It just I, doesn't feel no, hand in glove. I agree. I agree. Um, and as far as this game goes, uh, you know, to keep it as positive as everybody else has been. Uh, and look, it, it's it's fun when we're winning, right? You know what I mean? I know that people love the show more when we're losing, um, but uh, but uh, but I feel good about this one. I I do. To be think, fair, they don't really like it no, that no, much. No, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. To 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 be on, I feel like this is definitely kind of like what Kevin was saying. This is a this is a Badger team that I think is going to try and play great defense, limit our big plays. Uh, and then control the football. You know what I mean? Run the football, control the game, just kind of keep the score low, right? 1965 football, right? I, I do think they still kind of like to do that there. That's what they're built to do. So I'm going to say 28 to 17 Penn State wins. Okay. But I but I do think it's a win. I think it's a great game. It's another one that, that we get to put in the in the bank and uh, and roll into that, that one in two weeks, which will be a lot of fun. You are the better football team. You're the deeper team. You're the more talented team. Again, I think you're the better coach team. Yep. Just go out and play like it. Just go out and do it. Take care of this one. And then the doors are flung wide. All things are possible. Enjoy it. Go State. Beat the Badgers. We'll see you next week. Take care of yourselves and each other. We are. Virtual cheers to Kevin Horn in high cyberspace. <laughs> <laughs>